say that there are a lot of commanders that come out every year is an understatement. Jake and I have combed the multiverse for sleeper commanders, ones that are under the radar, not being played as much as we think they should be playing, and we are going to go over them today. We're not talking about CEDH, super competitive, super sweaty cards, but stuff that is going to provide a unique play experience. Let's get into the pick. Highest level of gratitude to our patrons who power the channel through Patreon. Check out the Patreon link in the description to learn about monthly giveaways, VIP Discord access, and even our official playmat. Real quick, huge shout out to our sponsors, Card Conduit, best place to sell your cards on the internet, TCG Player, the official online store of Jake and Joel and Magic. If you're going to check out over there on TCG Player, use our link before you do. Helps us out at no extra cost to yourself. Dragon Shield's the best way to protect your sleeves, and Moxfield is the best way to list them on the internet. So when somebody's like, hey, you got a deck list for that? You can be like, I absolutely do. Here's the Moxfield. A very special thank you to all of our patrons. If you want to help us make videos full time, that's a great way to do it as well. EDH Rec is a website that we use a lot, and you should too. The link to it is down in the description. What they do is they they pull together all of the data across all of the internet deck building websites to show us what cards are getting played and put in decks the most. That ranks all of the commanders on the internet that are out by how many commander decks are built online with those. Jake and I have explored commanders number 401 through 600 to bring you these sleeper picks. These are way under the radar and don't have near as many deck lists popping up as any of the stuff that is constantly getting deck lists like Atraxa or Kenrith. And we're gonna start with Ashling the Pilgrim. This is one of my picks and it's something that's been around for as long as Lorwyn has been here. But in recent years, we've seen a lot of damage amplification effects, stuff like fiery emancipation, that kind of thing. So Ashling, one red, one other, for a 1-1, one, one, but it has this very unique ability for one red and one other and a colon. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on Ashling the Pilgrim. If this is the third time this ability has resolved this turn, remove all 1-1 one, one counters from it, and it deals that much damage to each creature and each player. So a very interesting ability here. Uh, one of the first things I would do for a creature like this, a commander like this, is I want to have a way to protect it. So in addition to stuff like, you know, probably a pair of Lightning Greaves, we're going to want something that gives it indestructible. So Mithril Coat, for three, we have a Flash Indestructible, just like a strictly better Dark Steel Plate because of the Flash. I know the equip is, is a little bit different, but this has Indestructible itself, so it's not going to fall to a Vandal Blast and it is also going to give the creature indestructible. So this would be a shoe in in the deck, especially if we're going to be blowing up the board a lot. This seems like a way to go. Make sure that Ashling's out there and is very pesky and is able to keep doing its thing. Yeah, I love that having that ETB of a target legendary creature you control getting this attached to it immediately with that flash. Three mana save a thing, that's a pretty good return there. And you know, Jake, with that damage, what are you going to want to do more than amplify it? Yeah, might as well amplify the damage. Like I was saying, there's a lot more effects like this that have been coming out, which is why I think Ashling is kind of a sleeper, right? Is as we get more of this, like these huge enchantments and effects that are going to be able to, you know, I we were just looking at Descent into Avernus. That's another card that I would probably put in here as well just this kind of stuff gratuitous violence you're gonna have no problem casting it because it's three red and you're in mono red three red two other for an enchant if a creature you control would deal damage to a permanent or player it deals double that damage to that permanent or player instead so a lot of stuff like sulfim comes to mind all sorts of different effects but great card it seems really fun and it's probably something that i i will uh brew with at some point yeah lots of combo potential with ashling you don't have to take all the counters off at any point other than when you activate that ability and it has the number of counters it's looking for to take them all off and so you can put a bunch of counters on ashling and then activate that ability once it's really suited up with plus one plus ones and do a ton of damage jake i kind of went the opposite direction with my first pick on sleepers and i went with elevator of the wild court this is a new commander oh. i think it's still not on a ton of people's radars just because there are so many good enchantress green white enchantment based commanders that you can pick from but this is my new favorite and has 
entered my roster of five active commanders that I keep at any given time. Elevator the Wild Court says one white, one green, two other for a 4-4 four, four human knight. When it ETBs or attacks, you create a virtuous roll token attached to another target creature you control. So you need a creature on the battlefield and you get to create a token aura enchantment of basically all that glitters. It's almost the exact same text, if not the exact same text. Gets plus one, plus one for each enchantment you control. You can turn a one, one, nothing into a huge threat that then yeah. because of Elevator's other passive, whenever an enchanted creature you control deals combat damage, you get to draw a card and just keep your hand filled, which a deck like this needs to do because you want to keep putting pressure on the board. This was a pre-con commander, Jake, and it came with this brand new two magic and new in that pre-con card, Liberated Livestock filled up one of the big openings one of the big weaknesses that this type of deck has livestock says a white and five for a four six cat bird ox when it dies you create a one one cat creature token with lifelink a one one white bird creature token with flying and a two four white ox creature token for each of those tokens you may put an aura card from your hand or your graveyard onto the battlefield attached to it for free your Eldrazi conscription pops on to that one one <laughs> white creature token with lifelink for free and you've got an Eldrazi cat but yeah this one is beautiful because you can suit up livestock with a bunch of auras when it dies it and all those auras go to the graveyard those tokens are created and then those auras that were on it can come back to the battlefield attached to those tokens removal is one of the biggest weaknesses of this type of deck and this fills a huge gap as does another favorite brand new card of mine in this deck court of arden veil two white two other etbs you become the monarch gives you a little extra card draw and at the beginning of your upkeep, return target permanent card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to your hand. And if you're the monarch, it returns to the battlefield instead. Permanent card, so all your enchantments, all your creatures. In my version of Elevair, my active deck list, I've got 38 permanents in the deck that are mana value three or less. My, a third, more than a third of my deck gets hit by this Court of Ardenvale. So yeah. Elevair of the Wild Court. This is a new realm for me because I've always crapped on this archetype, but this commander is very, very strong and I've had fun playing it. Yeah, it's really interesting. Li liberated Livestock. This is kind of what I wish Reform did. This is just a, you just get <laughs> so much all value. At once. <laughs> yeah, you have a four six here that when it dies, you're just getting everything that you need. It dies, goes wide, and then you get all of this stuff from your graveyard as well and or your hand it's just it's just crazy dude yeah crazy card it's a nutters card and the commander's nutters too yeah next up we have bjorna also known as lucas it has this unique ability friends forever so you can pair it with the other stuff from stranger things this is the magic skinned version of the card universes and within universes within that's right so for one red and one blue you're getting a one three it has a really fun ability. Sacrifice an artifact. Bjorna Nightfall Alchemist deals one damage to target creature and you goad that creature. So if you don't know what goad is, until your next turn, that creature attacks each combat if able and it attacks a player other than you if able. It's not coming at you. So you're going to goad stuff, which means you need to be able to have artifacts to sacrifice in order to make that happen. So a couple cards that come to mind are Academy Manufacturer. You're in the colors for treasure. So why not get the most out of that? If you do make a treasure, you're going to be making a food. You're going to be making a clue. You don't need to use the food or the clue to uh, draw cards or keep you alive. Maybe you will, but you're using it so that you have artifacts to sacrifice using Bjorna's ability. Another card that comes to mind is something like Togo. Togo is, I mean, Academy Manufacturer has gotten so good in recent years and the more synergy with tokens, with treasure, specifically food, better this card gets. And it just seems like a shoe in in any deck that has that. And then also um, we have Togo, which kind of just shows you a creature that does the same thing. It has essentially a landfall ability that it, that's going to allow you to make rocks that you can also sack to goad creatures. That's what I would be using these for. Yeah, a lot of the builds that I see of this one use Wernog Rider's Chaplain as the friend forever. Um, that was the black and white two mana secret layer card that got the universes within version but yeah i love the landfall on this creating the artifact that you need to throw ping and goad something on a landfall trigger over and over again is fantastic 
Speaking of over and over again, let's create 1-1 one, one white flying creature tokens over and over again with Thelise, Reverend Medium, an uncommon. A black, a white, and three other for a 3-4 human cleric says at the beginning of each end step, not just yours, create X-1-1 one, one white spirit creature tokens with flying where X is the number of tokens that you created this turn. We can create tokens on our turn. We know how to do that. That's not a foreign concept to us. But creating tokens on our opponent's turn is done by a couple of different cards, one of which, and we'll represent all of them here with monologue tax. Whenever an opponent casts their second spell each turn, you create a treasure token. Typically, mm -hmm. this card is mid. It's a mid card. Let's be honest, it's fine. But in this deck, because we're looking for tokens to be created specifically not on our turn, because this also basically says whenever an opponent casts their second spell each turn, you create a treasure token, get a 1-1 flyer at the end of this turn. <laughs> That is actually starting to sound really good for the return here. Smothering Tithe, there are other cards, but find cards that create tokens on your opponent's turn. And then, Jake, we're going wide. This is a pretty straightforward deck. We want to create tokens on our turn and our opponent's turns to create even more tokens, our 1-1 one, one white flyers. And then we're yes. going to cast cards like Dramatic Finale to anthem them up and send the team flying and win that way. This is a commander that is probably not something I would typically play because I see so many gosh darn creatures being made, but I do see this being a fun, fun route to go. Yeah, you like to run Blasphemous Act over 13 creatures, right? And stuff like this that is really just super mean and kind of annoying. <laughs> uh, Kroxa came out a while ago. It's a card that made its debut in Theros Beyond Death uh, alongside... Uh, Euro? Euro? Yeah. What was its thing? Euro. Euro. Oh, Euro. this guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, that guy. That's right. <laughs> uh, Crooks a Titan of Death's Hunger for one red and one black. You get a 6-6. Six, six. When it enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless it escaped. Uh, on the ETB or the attack, each opponent discards a card. Then each opponent who didn't discard a non-land card this way loses three life. So this is a pretty group slug kind of commander going on here. You have an escape ability, two black and two red. Exile five other cards from your graveyard, and then you can cast this again. You get that brutal ETB again. Um, you want to be attacking with this. This is the kind of thing that once you resolve it, no one's really going to have cards if you're doing and building the deck correctly. And because no one has cards, we can kind of build and play around that. A card that comes to mind is Waste Not. We have one black and one other for an enchantment that says whenever an opponent discards a creature card, create a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token. So you're going to be getting residual value whenever other people are discarding. Whenever an opponent discards a land card, you're going to be adding two black. And whenever an opponent discards a non-creature non-land card, you're going to draw a card. So this is kind of like the engine of a deck like this. You would want to be running Waste Not to make sure that you're just drawing and drawing and drawing and adding mana, creating creatures... It just seems like a good route. And then finally, because your opponents are probably, you know, once they see you're on Kroxa and you're discarding cards, they're going to want to probably discard stuff that's bigger, stuff that they're not going to be able to cast. And you can plan for that. Stuff like Animate Dead and cards like Reanimate put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. So if someone pitches something big and you you happen to have Reanimate early, you might get a blowout just because you're able to resolve one of their big creatures right out of the game, uh, right out the gate. Yep. Typically, Jake, for these videos, I pick base copies. This copy of Waste Not, though, from the Enchanting Tales. Pretty sweet. Yeah, when you put Waste Not on your list, I was like, oh, baby, I got to pick the one that has the green and the eyeballs but yeah bro you said reanimator like i was in as soon as you said reanimator that's all you gotta say to me and suddenly i'm ready to play yeah it's almost like you're just running reanimate because it would be foolish not to you know if like you're gonna have everybody discarding cards you should have ways to play whatever they are discarding out of their yards and because you're doing it to everybody you are probably going to find something that works and that is a good target for reanimate all right, Jake, I put a mean one on the list as well. I didn't oh. want to just do nice, fun, create big creature tokens with auras stuff or any of that kind of fly over their head stuff. We're going to do some piracy stuff. This is Don Andres, the renegade. Okay. A red, a black, and a blue, and a one for a vampire pirate that's 4-3. It says, each creature you control but don't own 
gets plus two plus two has menace and death touch and is a pirate in addition to its other types whenever you cast a non-creature spell you don't own create two un create two tapped excuse me treasure tokens don andres wants you to steal your opponent's creatures wants you to exile cards from the top of the library and cast them yourself not your library your opponent's libraries so i have what chosen you're saying is it's it's terrible for spell table oh Got man it. this is not the spell table deck to build this is not a Got video it. titled best videos best decks for spell table because this one is certainly not there um i've chosen two pirates to represent the two mechanics that i think you need to focus on uh just for flavor you know coercive recruiter a red and four for a four three orc pirate whenever it or another pirate enters the battlefield under your control gain control of target creature until end of turn our commander gives it plus two, plus two, menace, death touch. Untap that creature until end of turn it gains haste and becomes a pirate in addition to its other types. Act of Treason. That's what we want to do with this deck. You probably also want to have a little bit of like a, an altar package in there so that you can steal stuff, swing with it, and then sacrifice yeah. it. And that's what your removal looks like. It's all very mean. The other pirate I chose, Jake, was Ramirez de Pietro, Pillager. A black, a blue, yep. and two for another 4-3 human pirate. When it ETBs, you lose two life, create two treasures. And it says whenever one or more pirates you control deal combat damage to a player, exile the top card of that player's library. You can cast that card for as long as it remains exiled. You want to look for effects like this. Effects like Atali provides you. Exiling cards from the top of your opponent's libraries, you get to play them and stealing your opponent's creatures and using them against them and then probably hopefully sacrificing them as well. Don Andres looks super fun, looks super mean, and it would kind of be probably be the kind of deck where I build it, play it once or twice, see the play experience that it provides for other people and then break it down and never play it again. <laughs> you also have red, which is going to allow you a, a, a ton of draw in the exact same way you're oh, going to yeah. want to run like ragavan because it works the exact same way right you're going to exile something you could potentially play it 100%. that's something that you don't own there's a ton of effects that are going to allow you to do this and so you're in the right colors for a mean deck oh yeah super mean oh. super piracy based it's just absolutely crazy next up we have obosh and we are not playing it in the companion way here i think there is a way that you could do that but we're just playing it straight up as a commander so for hybrid red and a black or two two hybrid red and a black and three other you get a three five legendary creature hellion horror that says if a source you control with an odd converted mana cost would deal damage to a permanent or player it deals double that damage to that permanent or player instead so there's a little bit of a similarity here to ashling that we were talking about where you're going to want to run effects that amplify your damage you're going to want to run big splashy stuff like one of my favorite cards karavik which is going to say whenever uh, uh whenever an opponent casts a spell karavik the merciless deals damage equal to that spell's mana value to any target so because karavik is a an odd converted mana costs whenever it has this triggered ability happen it's going to deal double that damage instead so having obosh as your commander is going to amplify effects like this and you're going to get a ton of value out of this also shout out to roaming throne because it should be in pretty much any deck that has a triggered ability happening uh it's not in this video but we do acknowledge it that is there now are there are a ton of decks that should have roaming throne it popped them. up above your head when you said that you didn't see it pop up above your head when you oh, said roaming oh, throne. shout out roaming throne the power of editing <laughs> da -da 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 -da. also brash taunter one red and four other for an indestructible uh whenever brash taunter is dealt damage it deals that much damage to target opponent so block it because it's a five cost and it triggers off obosh you're going to get extra damage out of it. If it blocks an 8-8, eight, eight, it's going to deal 16. That's how doubling works. Ah, Pretty good. math. Very good. A deck that requires you can, math. You can trigger the fight. It's uh, like, what more do you want? This card does everything. It does everything it needs to, except uh, it folds It folds sadly to... Minus one, uh, minus, minus one. X. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's still, it's still sick. It's still oh, a good yeah. card. I like taking a companion and putting it in the command zone, man. That's a fun time. Yeah. It was only a matter of time before you were like, oh, I could play a city on fire type of effect out of the command zone. I think I'll do that. Right. 
So yeah. I'm kind of like, how have I not built Obosh? It's on theme for you. It's certainly on theme. I've got sort of, again, the opposite thing going here. I got some crazy political stuff I want to try with Cross Defense Contractor. This is a hard one to figure out, but... It's a challenge that I'm ready to accept. A blue, a white, a green, and one other for a 2-4 cat advisor. It says at the beginning of your upkeep, put a shield counter on target creature and opponent controls. A shield counter is sort of like totem armor, except it says if it would be dealt damage or destroyed, you remove the shield counter from it instead. So if you're familiar with Hearthstone, cards that came out with a shield on them when they took damage that's how you get the shield off very similar mechanic here except it's a shield counter so at the beginning of your upkeep you put one of those on a target creature and opponent controls and then whenever you put one or more counters on a creature you don't control tap that creature so we'll be able to get through that turn and goad it so we're not going to have to worry about a crackback and it gains trample until next turn so it de-incentivizes our opponents from blocking creatures our opponents are being forced to send at them cross defense contractor seems like a really political card to me and i really like that you want to run cards that put a lot of counters on your stuff and your opponent's stuff if you choose this one says at the beginning of your instep for each player put a plus one plus one counter on up to one target creature that player controls so we get to pick and choose but it counts if we drop a counter on there per cross's second ability one or more counters on a creature you don't control we get to tap it goad it and it gains trample so nils is going to let us do that at will and also kind of be a, a nice little pillow fort version of a card i also think that we need some proliferate and has counters yep. strategies in here ripples of potential is a newer card a blue and one for an instant speed proliferate which plays with that strategy we're already doing then choose any number of permanents you control that had a counter put on them this way those permanents phase out so it's kind of like a blue wow. heroic intervention sort of where our stuff is going to be saved right it very much is like a blue heroic intervention this is a great card yeah. i didn't even know about this card it's newer that it's... shows how out of out of the loop i am but no, no it's it is just a, brand a ton new of card. cards yeah it came out last yeah. set ton of new cards it was commander only um lcc you can see it down there in the bottom left this one is really representative of if you're going to play a deck like this proliferate effects any cards that say car uh, you know permanents that have counters on them look for those types of cards because they're really going to help you build it and then because whenever we put that counter on we goad it we tap it down and it gains trample we can also play with some tap down synergies we've had some mechanics like this before wilds of eldraine brought us some new tap down mechanics as well but cards like verity circle get a new life in here a blue and two enchantment says whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes tapped if it isn't being declared as an attacker you may draw a card so with cross we get to put the counter on there tap them down goad them draw a card they oh. gain trample you know, manipulator comes to mind yeah, yeah exactly that kind of stuff this is a very political deck i think that this is an interesting one because if you're doing everything right you're basically orchestrating a war between all of your opponent's creatures that you don't have to get involved in okay so because all of my picks had red i figured i would just go something very different <laughs> uh green sleeves maro sorcerer two green three other for a star star protection from planeswalkers and from wizards that's probably just got to be some flavor that i don't really understand but wizard is More. a very uh, a very relevant creature type uh green sleeves power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands you control spoiler we're going to be ramping Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, create a 3-3 three, three green badger creature token. So They actually have this token, want, by the way. Yeah, we would probably want like a doubling season in here. There's probably some some stuff like that where we're going to want to uh, buff tokens. But let's go ahead and talk a little bit about how this deck is going to work. We're going to cast ramp spells <laughs> because we want to play big stuff like Awaken the Woods. For two green and X sorcery, create X one one green forest dryad land creature tokens. So imagine if we have a doubling season, we cast big stuff like this. There's other cards that aren't pictured here, stuff like Cultivator Colossus, tons of other cards that do big effects when they come in. Um, Avenger of Zendikar comes to mind, tons of stuff like that. And then what do we want to do when we fill the board up with a bunch of tokens? Ah, cast a crater hoof. Oh, hello, and new combo card has arrived, everybody. Yeah, when it enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain trample and get plus X plus X until end of turn where X is the number of creatures you control. So yes, you're going to make badgers. You're going to turn your lands into creatures. You're going to cast a crater hoof behemoth. You're going to win the game. 
Look, budget sleeper commander that you just need this $45 finisher card for, and you're good to go, <laughs> bro. You're good to go. There's other stuff. End race forerunners. <laughs> yeah, and, I'm, and, yeah right? I'm just giving There's you a like hard budget. time. There's plenty, plenty yeah. of other finishers. This is representative of overrun effects, basically, is what you're saying. Because overrun is also a budget option for this finisher. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Big green slammers. That's my that's turning stuff sideways. Let's do it, bro. You're speaking my language with this one. I'm trying to go uh Trying to go from this to a mean one, though, okay? You went my oh, direction okay. for your fifth pick, so I'm going to go your oh. direction for my fifth pick, and I'm going to oh, say right. Ramsey's Assassin Lord, a black, a blue, and two other for a 4-4 death-touching human assassin. Other assassins you control get plus one, plus one, and whenever a player loses the game, if they were attacked this turn by an assassin you controlled, you win the game. You only need to eliminate one opponent as long as an assassin attacked you're going to win that game straight wow. up. Yeah. I think this is a cool one because it lets you, like I've said before, you need a project commander deck or multiple. This lets you have a project commander deck of every single time a set comes out, you get to go, oh man, were there any new assassins that were printed into that set? And I get a new card for my deck. Super fun. This one though, I mean, look, you're going to get to play assassins, right? Cards that have creature type assassin that's where you want to live with the assassin deck for sure but look in my opinion you just run a little card called masquid nexus. nexus and every single creature's an assassin baby yeah dude i was gonna say and then i i looked at the notes i was about to make a <laughs> note about masquid nexus and then i was like oh masquid nexus is the pick oh dude yeah, this pay is, three this tap is kind it, of create an assassin good to go <laughs> Yeah, because you would want to look at changelings For and sure. that kind of thing 100%. because you want something that's every creature type, right? Mm -hmm. But Maskwood Nexus is a good representation. This came out in call time, but every now and again, you get a set that's going to bring you something juicy like this. It's going to fit into um, decks that uh, favor a specific creature type, right? So when we're looking at stuff like Assassins, Maskwood Nexus is where you have to look because then it's just a matter of create this 2-2 shapeshifter and then give it unblockable. Make sure your commander's on the battlefield. You win the game. Or play a creature yeah. with any creature type that says this creature can't be blocked. And then play right. Maskwood Nexus onto the battlefield. Boom, you're done. Right, exactly. Maskwood Nexus just makes everything what it needs to be. Thank you again to all of our sponsors that make this channel possible. And to our patrons who put so much time into playing in our commander league and hanging out in the discord we appreciate all of you so much if you did enjoy this video click like and subscribe that's a great way to support the channel and we will be back with more sleepers in the future see you in the next one